After seven years as a fugitive, one-time Black Panther leader Eldridge Cleaver arrived at Kennedy Airport in New York early this evening and was immediately arrested by FBI agents. His return from France wasn't easy. He got caught in Paris traffic on the way to the airport, and then his flight was delayed three hours when another airliner went off the run. Eldridge Cleaver's return to the United States is the subject of Eric Severide's commentary. Mr. Eldridge Cleaver never understood America because he never understood himself. Now he understands both. So the ex-revolutionist, fugitive from justice, who fled abroad seven years ago, has now fled several foreign countries, including communist ones, and back to the United States. He discovered that he was not an African, but a black American. He discovered that communism, in spite of a new rationale and new techniques, is the oldest of all systems, tyranny. He now prefers prison in the United what it means is that all the years he was violently and consciously protesting life in this country, his unconscious self felt at home here. He had said his soul was on ice here, to use the title of his book. Abroad he found himself in the deep freeze. He sounds entirely honest about all this. He admits that his ideas have changed. He does argue also that things have changed in the United States in these seven years, making it possible for him to receive justice from authority. Things have not changed that much, and it was always possible. Nearly every one of the violent protesters that the system could not give them justice, including Angela Davis, received justice. Acquittals, in fact. He thinks the status of black Americans has fundamentally changed, that the American society has cleansed itself of evils like Watergate. He also accepts the cliché that nations get the leadership they deserve. A curious proposition. A bad president is sometimes elected, <clears throat> and then four years later a good president, while the nation has not changed at all. And few would argue that the farmers, mechanics, and tradesmen who inhabited the eastern seaboard 200 years are so exceptional that they deserve the extraordinary leadership of the founding fathers, a group without equal in centuries. These are the accidents of history, but cycles there do seem to be, and Cleaver may have possession of a deeper insight than most of us when he says now that for American democracy, a fabulous new era of progress is opening up, a creative era. The ghost of Alfred North Whitehead might agree. That formidable intellect once said that every truly creative period in history has been accompanied by or immediately preceded by not only conflict but violent conflict. An observation about the past, not a guarantee about the future.